Now what that ends up meaning is that the main focus of what you see highlighted in black is the apostatization of Christians. Jews were initially the recipient of the word. They were the initial Christians. There were a lot of Gentiles that were in Israel at that time too, and they converted as well. Okay? But it was first given to the Jews, and then they were supposed to go out and tell everybody the good news. But they didn't go anywhere. Instead, they split into a bunch of factions. You can even see that in Paul's letters, especially in 1 Corinthians 1, where he's talking about, you know, what did Kephas save you? Did I save you? No, we're all one in Christ, but they split into factions. Okay? About who, who was their teacher. They weren't thinking properly. It also, at that point, was not supposed to be, this is really important, it was not supposed to be some hierarchy of church. What all the apostles were supposed to do is go out and establish individual churches, and those individual churches would go from there. But they weren't supposed to join and fight each other. They weren't supposed to fight each other. They were just supposed to learn and live on the Word. Okay? That's how it was supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be at any time. That's how it was supposed to be in Israel. The Sanhedrin was a governing body for secular purposes. Okay? It was not... Um, how do you want to call it? It was not designed to be a religious body. It was civil. Okay? Now, it's true that there were some people in it who were also rabbis. But the two, separation of church and state, started by Moses. Because Aaron, his brother, was the priest, not Moses. And that was your big clue, okay? So the same thing is going on here is that there's fighting amongst all these different groups, mess what we would call Messianic Jews today, and Gentiles about their teachers. And they were getting really wacko about their doctrines during this time. So what I have to do, I have to do more research on it. This is actually talking about those teachers and the splits, which is part of what we would call Christian history, which I absolutely hate. You know, the, the church, so-called church fathers. I have to go back through the actual dates of those early so-called church fathers and the other factions that developed during this time to find out why this benchmark I mean it's future of Bar Kokhba so that's that's enough to show that it's intended but there's more intended than what I'm saying in all of these verses there's more intended that's more biting so the word for many waters is going to have a particular bite for the main thing that's being highlighted here by John only I don't know what it is except the generic I'm telling you the generic meaning and I know that that's true but there's more to it than what I'm saying, okay? So John is essentially making a comment on how these rebellions from Ketos and Kokhba resulted in fractionalism, okay? That's, where he's, that's how he's carrying the narrative forward about fractionalism amongst believers. It's real important that he do that because you cannot understand how come a Constantine resulted until you understand that the believers were fighting each other starting this time. And they were going way off what the Bible said. They each had their own little sect and they each had their own little interpretation. And it's fine to do that if your interpretation is right because we all have the same Bible. But they were all arguing with each other. And trying to take political power, trying to take each other's churches. And you see some of that, you know, that was already evidenced in the first three chapters of Revelation. And he's sort of reminding you of that here. Okay? But I haven't metered the first three chapters, so I don't know how far in time he's going with that. I've only metered the first chapter. And that's 364 years, which is to play on Ephesians 1. Okay? Because Paul constructs. 491s, which is like a year of church, as a repeating Groundhog Day. Okay? And so, John is playing to that. I know he's playing to that. 
but exactly how he's playing to it, I haven't worked out all the details. Okay? But what you see here is that each time you have a number, it stands for a specific period of time. And the text is telling you about that period of time in each chapter or each of these chapters. Maybe the other one, there are other ones, but I don't know about them yet. And so they interlock based on the meter counts, okay? But, but the best way to do it is to say, okay, this is 63, he's talking in 30 AD, so this is supposed to stand for 94 AD. So this text has particular relevance for the period ending in 94 AD, the six years ending then. The same thing here in Luke. It's also timed, even though Luke is writing in 58 A.D., the first meaning is to tie it to 94, okay? But then it also has a second tie from 58 plus 63 that ties again, same text, but to a different period in history, okay? Same thing with Mark. Mark also used 63. He's also setting the discourse at the time Christ is talking because these are Christ's words. Okay, so it's also 94 A.D. This text also applies to the period for 94 A.D. But Mark is writing in 69 A.D. And so this text, the same text, the same meaning that you've seen already now twice by the time Mark writes, also applies to 63 years after Mark writes. Well, what's that? Okay, Mark writes in 69, specifically on Passover. And so 63 years after that, is, oh, Bar Kokhba. You see? Oh, okay. So it's not surprising then that when you start doing the same thing, you're adding 44 to 88 when John writes, it's also Bar Kokhba. See, you're also getting the same time period as referenced in Mark, as referenced in Luke, as referenced in Matthew. And basically it's saying, hi, this is a historical trend that will keep on going because... Christ is talking in 30 A.D. This is about 94 A.D. So is this. But it's also about 28 years later. And so is this. But it's also about 69 years. Well, you know, 69 A.D. plus 63. You see how this is working? So it's historical trends. They're bracketing history. And they're all related to the text. Because it's all about the temple. All these things that I'm telling you about are related to the temple. That's why those things occurred. So when you're going to look for a specific, like what is it, 51 plus 69? Okay, what's that? Well, let's look. 51 plus 69 is 120. Well, what is it about 120 A.D. that Jesus answering them? Well, uh, well, Jesus said, gives an answer in 120 A.D. or during the period, the eight years ending in 120 A.D.? What does that mean? I don't know. I'd have to go look it up. Okay? I do know that Apocrites, which is not in Mark's text, but it is in the other two, is a an anaphoric keyword of judgment. Now, if that's what Mark means also except that this word doesn't belong in the text, it was in later text, but it wasn't in the original, then some kind of saying, some kind of pronouncement, that's the word to say, past tense, is for the eight years ending in 120. Well, that's just after the Ketos War. So what does that mean? I don't know. What's so specific about it ending, benchmarking at 120? Because that's what they're doing. He's benchmarking it by clause. So why is he benchmarking 120? I don't know. I mean, I have to go look up the history better. But once you find that history, it will have a biting meaning. Just like up here. Was it Luke? Or was it, was it Mark? No, maybe it was. Where's the lab on? Oh, here. Revelation. Okay? It's the same argument. You know, the Lord's talking. Okay? Saying. 
what the word saying is a generic word. How can that have any specific relevance? Well, when you find the right event, it'll be biting. And it is biting here. Because it's about what Trajan was saying when he died. And it's mapped to the very syllable in which he dies. 117. Okay? And then what was next said to Hadrian, come here. So when you find the exact event, it'll be biting like this. I just haven't found the exact events for all these be benchmarks. I only know some of it. You know, because this is like my first pass in trying to understand what this text is doing. But you'll notice that it's really precise. And you'll notice it's designed to fit together. You'll notice it's designed to bracket history. Okay? Now in the next increment, we're going to go to a different period of history using these same four books and show you how biting it is for something I do know a lot about, and that's Constantine.